Well, I have one of my uh, favorite whiskeys here with me and one of my favorite gentlemen in the whiskey business. It's Rick Edwards, national brand ambassador for Stratahans. And you're joining us live from the Denver Distillery, Rick. Hey, everybody. How you doing? It's been a busy day here at Stranahan's. I'm going to take you uh, on a quick little walk through the cellar. We're going to go through the fermentation, past the stills, and into the warehouse. You guys want to take a little walk with me? Let's let's take a walk. So things are really busy there for you. Oh, yeah. Cat Creek has been great. I mean, we've been setting up, pulling barrels out, getting everything ready for this uh, three-day event. It's going to be Saturday and Sunday. Uh, we've got, what, four uh, four different sessions over two days that we're doing. You can see up here, this is our fermentation vessels. Uh, this is basically where uh, we're making the uh, the flat beer. And then after all the flat beer is made, we take it over to the still house and we rip and strip everything through the wash stills. And the wash stills you can see right here are a little bit smaller. It is a uh, pot still, column still hybrid, or we like to call them hybrid stills. And then over nice. here under the US flag, you're going to see our uh, spirit stills. When they're coming off the spirit stills, you're looking at about 140 proof. But from 140 proof, we can only go into the barrels at 125. But here at Stranahan, we put them into the barrels at 110 because this high climate is going to raise that 110 proof up to about a cast strength of 114. Let's go to the Very barrel nice. here. So we're taking a tour here of Stranahan's in Denver, and you guys are right there next to downtown Denver, right aren't you? Right? Going to the barrel house. I may lose you oh. just because it is a uh, working Rick house and uh, that rack house, we may lose reception. So stay in touch with me, buddy. Very nice. All right. We can hear you now. I couldn't hear you for a second. We can hear you. Now, I am not hearing everything there. If you can tell, Rick, I know we're we're going deep inside the warehouse, and at the moment, I'm not hearing you, Rick, but uh, hopefully you guys can hear me. Uh, we are indeed taking a, an incredible live tour of Stratahan's Distillery there in Denver. Uh, Colorado. Okay, now we, I can hear something is back. Can you guys hear me? I'm hearing a little bit more now. Uh, we're going to be trying the new Mountain Angel 10-year-old here. Okay, Am I back I'm on, buddy? Okay, now I can see it. Go ahead. I can see you now. All right. Let me see if I can get back online with you. Sorry about that All little right. hiccup. We've just no a problem. I can't I... see you yet, <laughs> Hey, we're, we're, we're just happy to be taking a tour of Stratahans today. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to remove the video just very briefly. You see the Stratahans behind me. This is, in a moment, going to be one of the very first live tastings, the first one that we know of, of the Stratahan's new 10-year-old. They made less than 500 bottles of this. I have a little bit poured. I've been looking forward to trying this for a number of days, actually a number of weeks with Rick. They're getting ready for their uh, Cask Thief Festival there, and they're taking us through the warehouse. So let me bring Rick back on. Rick, are you able to hear us? Uh, testing with Rick. All right, Rick will rejoin us here in a moment, but uh, what I do have behind me is the Diamond Peak, the Sherry Cask finish, and also the original, and again, just released. You all may have heard about this, and definitely tell us down below if you have tried any of these and what your favorite is. I think we have Rick back here. Okay, now I can see you, Rick. Sorry about that, man. I tell you, it's just... Uh, I <laughs> I had everything set up, and then once we went into the Rick house, we just uh, lost connection, pal. It, it, could, it could be that altitude getting to us there, right? <laughs> yeah, that could be it, too. <laughs> no worries, so but tell us about what is it, the cast thief. That, you know, we are live and online, and we're just so glad to have you. Uh, tell us, what is cask thief? I know there's been people asking, what is cask thief all about? I've been. I'm a huge fan of it. What is it? So Cast Thief is a celebration. It's a festival that we have once a year. Uh, this marks our fifth year of doing Cast Thief, also known as the Stolen Sips. Uh, what we're doing is celebrating the creativity and the innovations that our head distiller, Owen Martin, what he could come up with wood finishes. So these are not whiskeys that will ever hit the market. These are whiskeys that you're going to taste one time, uh, and it's different every year. So we have six expressions of different wood finishings. Uh, that Owen put together, and you get to come out here. Uh, it's going to be Wings over uh, Colorado. It's the uh, National Air Museum. 
uh, God, what is it? 7711 uh, uh, Academy Drive out in Denver. It's at the and, National uh, Air Museum. You try all these innovations, man. And at the end of the night, you get to take home a uh, 375 bottle of your favorite uh, creations. Wow, that's incredible. What are the creations this year? I know I went uh, the second year it was held several years ago. There was some interesting cognac barrels. These are some really interesting finishes. What are uh, guests going to be trying this year? Yeah, we were actually just tasting these yesterday as we, as we were getting them all ready. Uh, man, we have got a... Uh, We've got a uh, uh, Irish cask finish. We've wow. got a uh, tequila uh, reposado cask finish. We've got a maple barrel. So what it was was um, bourbon barrels that then were used to hold maple syrup. Once all that was cleaned out, then they sent them over to us, and we actually used a used maple syrup barrel that was a previous bourbon barrel. Uh, a few other creations we got going on. Uh, Owen put together. Uh, it's called a double bubble and what we're doing is we're using two different yeasts so we're using brewer's yeast all stranahan's is made from a brewer's yeast not a distiller's yeast but he ran this through before it hit the still uh we ran through uh brewer and distiller yeast so it really created two different types of esters and esterification that was going on between those different yeast strains uh, a couple other things we got going on uh we've got a peated cask finish that we're doing that we got some uh Wow. Some nice Scottish peated uh, barrels shipped over to us. Uh, what else do we have going? A, a couple other ones. All kinds of great barrels. I know when I was there uh, years ago, it was the second year, and it was the very first time that you all had really introduced the sherry cask finish, and that one actually ended up becoming uh, one of the releases, but which was really amazing, and it's always a fun festival. Usually it happens at the distillery, but this, this year it's at a, uh, a museum. Yeah, uh, using those uh, uh, Oloroso wine barrels for uh, our sherry cask. They're 500 right. uh, liter Oloroso sherry cask from Andalusia, Spain. Another one of the uh, stolen sips that we're doing this weekend is actually a Colorado Cabernet. And it's a Colorado wow. Cabernet cask that we're using. So that's going to be an interesting uh, uh, addition as well. And again, Rick Edwards. Hey, National I do apologize Brewing. about this background noise, buddy. No, no, you're fine. We can see you well. Uh, we can. Uh, it's great to see you there at the distillery. It's one of my favorite places to visit. And uh, it's Rick Edwards of Stratahans, National Brand Ambassador. Couple new things that have come out uh, here recently. We'll talk about uh, one of them being the Blue Peak, uh, which we'll see uh, throughout the year. The other one being the Stratahans Mountain Angel, which is extremely limited, and. Uh, why don't we why don't we talk about the Blue Peak and then we'll taste a little of the uh, the Mountain Angel? Tell us about the Blue Peak. We just reported on it this week on Bourbon Blog. Uh, what's what's the Blue Peak? Thank you for asking me about Blue Peak. Uh, for us, yeah. this is the newest innovation that we have at Stranahan's. Uh, this really is uh, Owen Martin's baby. So Blue Peak uh, is a American Rocky Mountain single malt. However, we are chill filtering it. None of the other uh, Stranahan expressions are chill filtered, except for Blue Peak. So we're going to chill filter it, and then we're going to release it as an 86 proof, not a 94 proof. Now, 94.3, 94.7, am I saying that right, is going to be the uh, Mountain Angel 10-year-old. But Blue Peak, man, I tell you, it's a four-year-old straight whiskey that is then put into the fooders. Now, I wanted to take you into the warehouse to show you the fooders, uh, they are 3,000 gallon uh, vats where we actually, it's like a Solara system. We add all that straight four year old in, and then we take out about 80% of it, but we're going to leave 20% in, add more four year old into it. So every time we do a batch, you're mingling old four year old with new four year old. Wow. Uh, and also, that just gives it, it rounds out the flavors, it gives it a really nice uh, marriage of, uh, of character. So this Solera, part of the goal with the Solera is to leave some of that in and just give some more character, more depth of flavor. That is correct. And very I know that you yourself are very familiar with Solera oh, yeah. and the process. Um, so Blue Peak is really going to come into the market. It's going to elevate any of your favorite cocktails that you may like and enjoy. Uh, we're bringing it in as our entry level. Uh, keep in right. mind that uh, last time we talked, we talked about original which was a yes. two-year, a three-year, a four-year, and a five-year-old. Um, our sherry cask is a straight four-year-old with a sherry finish. Blue Peak is a four-year-old Solera system. So every expression is just a different creation that we're creating here at the distillery. 
I love the, the 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 new line extensions, Rick, that you guys are releasing. I think it's very exciting, and the Blue Peak again coming very soon to all markets that uh, showcase Stratahans, and that's going to be the entry level. And what what do you like best about the flavor of Blue Peak? I haven't tried it yet. Tell me about what you like on the flavor. Man, it is butterscotch candy. It is Werther's, or I don't want to say any brand names, but it is like a nice grandma's butter uh, a butterscotch candy. You're going to get this beautiful ripe pear and vanilla notes. Uh, when you taste Blue Peak uh, against the original, you can really see a big difference in some of these uh, fruity flavors. Whereas original really hits you with vanilla and banana, this is hitting you with that vanilla uh, pear and, and butterscotch. Uh, it's a little bit lighter, so you're not going to get that shock on the tip of your tongue. Uh, and I wouldn't say a shock, but it's, it's uh, a lower proof. So it's a lot more approachable for new single malt uh, uh, whiskey drinkers. Right. Excellent. So if you have any questions for Rick about the Blue Peak or any of the other new releases, ask them below, tweet them back to us. And as you're watching, that's on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. Like this video, share this. I already see a lot of fans of Stratahans and those that have been from the distillery know the scenes in the background are very familiar to us. A beautiful distillery there in Denver. And again, something very exciting happening, not at the distillery, but at a museum close by to the distillery uh, this weekend, the Cask Thief. Cast Thief brings in a lot of people. I mean, this is a, a really big event for you guys. It's, I mean, it's huge. Like I said, this is our fifth event, and uh, we sold out within a couple days. Like, it was gone. All the tickets, every session uh, was gone. Hey, you know, now that I'm on line with you, there's a few things I did want to hit. And Go for it, on. please. Uh, when people ask, what is Stranahan's, I yes. just want everybody to know that it is an American single malt, and 100% yeah. malted barley uh, – We've got four different types of barley that we're using. We're using chocolate malt. We're using espresso malt or black malt, caramel right. malt, but then our pale malt is the driver. And about 90% of the pale malt comes out of uh, Golden, Colorado. The water source that we're using is uh, pristine Rocky Mountain water from El Dorado Springs, just south of Boulder, Colorado. Actually, El Dorado Springs has been voted number three best tasting water in the world. So I'm glad <laughs> we're using it for our single malt. A couple other plugs to give Stranahan's is we recently just won a double gold medal at the San Francisco uh, World Spirit Competition and won a gold medal at the Denver International Wine uh, uh, Spirits Wine and Spirits. Uh, uh, well done. Uh, judging. So some really great things to know about the brand here. We are a pioneering spirits and the first distillery since Prohibition here in Colorado. You yeah, guys, have been for some I, got it all, I got it all done, but you got it done, and 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 again, we're we're so glad to see you there with the uh, Strata hands in the backdrop. Again, everyone watching, you're watching Bourbon Blog Live. If you are uh, watching this, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, make sure you're following us or bookmarking that link there because we always enjoy going live with our good friends like Rick Edwards, and we're always bringing you new spirits and new spirit tastings. Uh, on Bourbon Blog Live. And I tell you, I've been a fan, Rick, of Stratahan since the early days. Uh, you are indeed pioneers uh, in whiskey, in single malt. It's grown so much with all the new uh, line extensions. And uh, we always love the snowflake. But I think this year, even rarer, more rare than the snowflake is that mountain angel. And we're going to taste that with you here in just a moment. Now, Rick, can you still hear me and see me? I can Thank see, you. see you. I'm not going to be able to taste Mountain Angel with you because this is the glass up and bottle. But I, if I go in the room, I'm going to lose you. So I'm going to let you taste it, but I can easily walk you through it, brother. All right. Excellent. Here we go. I'm going to I'm gonna grab it. And I think if you come – yeah, there you are. I can see you now. It kind of froze for a moment. But I actually – what I did was – I'm going to do a little bit more because I was I was beginning off. I see I have them all back here. I even have the, uh, I have the Diamond Peak back here, so I have them all behind me. But I was starting off with the um, – the original, again, which is a blend of two, three, four, and five-year-old. Is that correct? Yeah. And, you know, I don't so know has, if this is too early to tell you, but in the next uh, couple of years, we may be taking that to a four, five, six, and seven-year-old. Wow. Or for the five, for the six, and seven-year-old, yeah. So we're going like, to leave Blue Peak as a four-year-old, and then we're going to elevate the original to a five, six, and seven-year-old, possibly eight. Excellent. That, that's what we have to look forward to. And then with the Diamond Peak, will it stay the same? Uh, Di well, Diamond Peak, we're actually, Diamond Peak is going to be uh, allocated for a while. We're okay. going to allow those barrels to mature a little bit older. We're okay. going to uh, we're gonna let Blue Peak come in and just really kind of carry 
that uh, that that uh, charge forward for Stranahan's. So um, Diamond Peak, we're, we're, we're going to sit on that for a little bit and then come out hopefully in a couple of years uh, with a bigger and bolder flavor for that for Diamond Peak. Excellent. So there's, there's more things to look forward to for Diamond Peak, but for now the Diamond Peaks that are out there are at least four years old. Is that Those right? Those are four-year Solero Vatch. Yeah, four, very similar four, four to what Blue Solero Peak Vatch. is, uh, but when you taste them side by side, big differences on the flavor. And that's Excellent. basically happening because of the chill filtration and the extra uh, reduction of El Dorado spring water really kind of opens up those bouquets, makes it a little softer, and definitely changes the Diamond Peak from the Blue Peak. Excellent. So what I have here is, um, I, and, if, and hopefully everyone can see the color differences, I have the Stratahans yellow label, and I have some of the Stratahans Mountain Angel tenure. I mean, these, if you can see this 10-year-old, the color on this, the depth. This is some whiskey that was laid down a long time ago. Well, 10 years ago, keep in mind, um, uh, 10 years ago, these barrels were laid down uh, in new, brand new American oak with a right. level three char. Right. Uh, this is the first American single malt to go a full 10 years in, wow. vir in virgin oak, in uh, new American oak. Wow. So uh, the fact that we've been around long enough and that we've been a pioneer of this whole category that we are able to come out with a 10 year old. But, you know, you and I spoke last time about the evaporation rate and the angel share loss. Yes. And, you know, I mean, I worked in Scotland and Ireland for the past couple decades and over in Scotland and Ireland, we're looking at about a 2 percent to a 3 percent angel share loss. But here at the Rocky Mountains, being a mile high, that mile high uh, maturation and aging. We're losing 8% of the barrel in 10 years. Now, over in Scotland, it takes 40 years to lose 80% wow. of the barrel. We're doing that in 10 years. So that says a lot years. about those vapors going in and out of the wood and the flavors that we're picking up through those equilibriums. So again, in Scotland, it would take 40 years for that to happen. And in Denver, you all lost 80% of each barrel in 10 years. It, yeah. Yeah. So you you were left uh, honestly, with very we, we only had five barrels of that ten year old. That's it. About wow. Five barrels go into this. There's less than five hundred bottles available in the nation. So this is this is very special. This is something for those single malt whiskey fans, those big Stratahans fans. Uh, it's out. It's out right now. You can look for it. Is that true? It's pretty allocated, buddy. So pretty allocated. Think of it as a unicorn. If you can get your hand on a bottle. You hang on to that. Enjoy it, though. I want you to drink it. I want you to enjoy those beautiful leathery and tobacco yeah. and buttery suede. Um, just gorgeous flavors. All the mm. pear, that licorice notes. I mean, you really can taste that 10-year of uh, mile-high aging. All right. I just had my first sip. I was going back and forth nosing. And while I do definitely get those uh, those DNA of Stratahans on it, the... Uh, the beautiful butterscotch, the but butteriness, the chocolate, the beautiful malts. Certainly when I go to this 10 year, just something magical and extremely deep happens. Uh, this is, I mean, this is something that tastes to me like it could be even over 10 years old. Oh, so please explain and, and help us and the viewers understand what is it like on the nose and then transferring from that nose and that, that aroma and the bouquet to what it's like first on the palate and then the finish. So I'd love Absolutely. to hear your take on these. Absolutely. Well, when I say over 10 years, I mean, thinking about older single malts that I've had, Rick, whether it's scotch or American whiskey, uh, nothing quite this old on the um, American single uh, malt whiskey front. But as you mentioned, leather, a lot of good char, uh, mellow. It has this wonderful barrel, but the mellowness of the barrel, along with the depth on the nose, is really surprising to me because I get this great nose of the char, the barrel, but the softness that it speaks is something that's very fragrant. Um, slightly, I mean, it's amazing that it's slightly floral, not not overly floral, but the way that essence comes up the nose is something very special. Uh, and then when I sip it, I'm, I'm going to hold it in my mouth for a little while to let it do its magic because it's been aging for so long. Wow. As you said, licorice, maybe a touch of clove, wonderful uh just really elegant milk chocolate as well it just that goes milk. places you get that too I that milk chocolate because i get a coffee like a, almost a chocolate coffee or an wow. espresso 
chocolate uh, chocolate covered espresso bean. Yes, exactly. There. Yes, that chocolate covered espresso bean. It just it's yeah. very elegant, and it, it's it's elegant like a fine cognac would be. I mean, you can tell what the age has done to this. Um, the mouthfeel too, velvety mouthfeel. Uh, the mouthfeel the is just too. Yes, those oils. This is just something very uh, very dynamite. Uh, when you first tried this at at, at ten years old, uh, obviously you know. I drink a fair amount of Strata Hands. You being the national brand ambassador, you're all, you're trying Strata Hands, showcasing it so well across the country. What were you expecting, and and did it surprise you as far as where it had gone in ten years? Well, you know, the first uh, thing I got when we were sitting around and we were tasting this, we were in the sampling room. Uh, you know, we were just having what we call in Scotland a blether. We were just hanging out. Um, it was kind of funny because I kept hearing the word leather. And it wasn't hitting me as leather because when I think of leather, I think of like sharp leather, big shoe polish kind of aromas. To me, it wasn't leather. It was buttery, soft suede. So for all of you wow. out there who's ever owned a suede jacket and a yes. leather jacket, you know there's a difference in the aroma of leather and suede. There's a difference in the touch and the feel and just the way it fits and flexes on you. So for me, I got more suede than leather. If you know, not that I'm over there licking suede jackets by any means, but you know what I mean. <laughs> not yet. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and again, the proof this is at the proof again is what? I mean, I'm just I'm getting some really uh, uh, more sun dried fruit, even though we're not using yes. sherry cast. I think that age on wood just ripens all those beautiful fruits. I get kind of the pears. Uh, definitely get the banana coming out in there. Uh, there's a little peachy, peachy pear flavor that I get from Strana Hands. Oh, but yeah. the weirdest yeah. thing that I get in the back of my palate that I've never really experienced on other whiskeys is this. I've had black pepper on the end notes, but this is like a cayenne pepper. And there's something about Strana okay. Hands and the, the barley that this right. cayenne pops on the back of my palate. And uh, I just think it's fantastic. Mm. Well, you know, that's interesting, Rick, because I know one, and I'm trying to remember which one, we almost every year review the snowflake. And I know one of the snowflakes several years ago, I said, I get some some pepper, like you're saying, some spicy peppers on one of the snowflakes. That single malt against the wine barrel somehow kind of made that that pepper, that spiciness uh, rise. To me, that really the, the interesting ways that this comes across as both bold, nice char, the leather slash the suede, the, you know, the, the, the serious warehouse, you know, it, there's kind of this, um, in Kentucky, we say it's, it has this not exactly barnyard like, but it's this old warehouse note, but it's this old good warehouse against something fruity and a little bit floral and sweetness. So it's sweet, it's complex, it's char. It hits a lot of different levels on the whiskey spectrum. Excellent. Yep. Hey, uh, one thing I'd love people to taste, so if you go to your liquor stores, you yes. might be able to find some of the barrel program. So we do have single barrel cast strength expressions. Uh, unfortunately, you can pretty much only find those at the liquor stores who buy right. a full barrel. But if you ever get that opportunity uh, to really taste a single cask, cast strength, non-chill filtered next to the original, you can see exactly what you just explained. You can really wow. see your explanation come to life just by tasting those two together just getting a single barrel and and one of the yellow labels and really seeing what a difference yeah. it is or and blue again, peak. Our, our the blue peak be looking for the blue peak we, but, but you know definitely whichever strat of hands it is whether it's the sherry the uh the blue peak the diamond the yellow i mean we always know this is going to be something very special that showcases the grain a lot of different complexities from sweetness to earth all in one sip. It's such a great whiskey, and we've been so honored to be there at Strata Hands for a lot of uh, great times and parties like the Cask Thief. I know about eight, I think it was seven or eight years ago, I was there for the uh, launch of the well-built beer with Breckenridge Brewery, where they had finished the uh, beer in the um, in the uh, used Strata Hands barrel. So it's always a great experimentation. Waving to everybody there. I see the bar there. That's looking good. A lot of great people there. Tell them all I said hello, Rick. Will do, buddy. Yeah, it's, it's, it's awesome seeing you and uh, looking forward to uh, hearing how Cask Thief goes. And again, if you're watching this near Denver, it is sold out. But for all those who are going to be headed there, it's happening both Saturday and Sunday. Is that right? Saturday and Sunday, yes. Saturday and Sunday this year. Um, and definitely we'll be hoping to uh, and looking forward to being there with you again soon. Be looking for the Stranahan's Mountain Angel 10-year at... It's going to be hard to find, but look for it. 
Uh, that's one of those that I, I mean, hopefully people crack open, but this is going to be one that's probably going to be a, a real collectible, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, I really see people buying two bottles, one to keep and one to drink. That's that's a definitely a good idea. I mean, this is less than 500 bottles. So one of the rarest whiskey releases uh, that I've heard about this year that's so uh, anticipated and expected and uh, will really be fun to try for those of you. I've really enjoyed tasting this with you today, Rick. And uh, what else are you looking forward to doing there in Denver while you're there in Denver? What's funny is what staying at is right next door to the Firefighter Museum. And if you guys go on my Instagram, I got two Instagrams. One is single malt Rick, and the other is uh, whiskey uh, underscore Richard underscore. Uh, that's my professional. But if you go on my single malt Rick, you will see this 1953 fire truck. It was an old 1953 fire engine that I have, uh, and it is absolutely stunning and perfect condition. So I do plan on Sunday morning going through the uh, firefighter museum before I head out to Cast Thief. So that's a real, that's a special museum. That's uh, that's really cool. Very nice. Yeah, it's really. I mean, it's interesting just to see everything in there, and uh, you know, even the building itself was built in like 1910, so it's an old or 1908 uh, old firehouse. So that's one thing. But to be honest with you, man, it's it's been busy. We've been doing a lot of work, um, both on the corporate side and on the production side uh, this week. So, as you can tell by my whole clothes. Been, uh, <laughs> you have your you have your uh, tie on now. Absolutely, uh, it's you, you're looking good. I like I like the look on you, and uh, definitely uh, tell Owen and Pete and Keegan, all of our friends there, Rick, that we said hello. We'll look forward to seeing all of you guys soon. Best wishes with Cask Thief, and thank you for the opportunity to uh, to chat today about uh, uh, about uh, the Blue Peak, the uh, the the Mountain Angel. The Blue Peak's actually named after a mountain there, right? Well, yeah, so snowflake event that we have every December, yep. all of the snowflake expressions are named after 14ers. 14ers right. is the Colorado word for uh, summits that are over 14,000 feet. Now, Blue Peak is actually just under 14,000 <laughs> uh, feet. So Blue Peak is not considered a 14er. Uh, it is about 13,770 feet, but not quite the big dogs. So not quite uh, it there. is named, yeah, and, and Blue Peak is actually – uh, just outside of Aspen, Colorado. Wow. And then the Mountain Angel, same story, right? Yeah, well, uh, Mountain Angel, yeah. So Mountain Angel is, uh, there is a little story behind there that is not official, so I'm not even going to dive into it. Uh, but there is a summit uh, just west of Colorado Spring. It's not called Mountain Angel, but it's known as, a.k.a. the Mountain Angel. So you can do your own research on that. Excellent. Thank you so much, Rick. It's so good to see you. And again, you're watching Bourbon Blog Live. We're also going to have this up every place you're watching it permanently. And if you want to listen to our podcast interview uh, with Rick, subscribe to our podcast there down below. I'm going to taste a little bit more of this, and I'm going to let you get back to work there as you prepare for Cask Thief. Rick, so great to see you, buddy. And yeah, we uh, got a couple of consumers in here enjoying uh, some, some Blue Peak as we speak. Excellent. How are you liking it? Oh, they're loving it. I'm sure they are. <laughs> they're behind glass, so they can't hear oh, they us. Are they probably didn't hear me. But yeah. they look. They, hey. I couldn't tell they were behind glass, but that's <laughs> they great. They were behind glass. <laughs> Listen, uh, everybody know, if you want to learn more about Cask Thief or Snowflake Event or Stranahan's, yes. uh, please just go to the stranahan's.com website. If you haven't subscribed to Stranahan's uh, Instagram, do that. I already told you I'm at uh, Single Malt Rick or Whiskey there Richard. Is. And yep. uh, just a couple shameless plugs there. Always great talking to you. I wish I could have been in the barrel house to show you the beautiful setup I made, but Wi-Fi didn't agree with us. No worries. I tell you what, if you want to text me a couple pictures, we'll we'll post them and we'll let everybody see what uh, what it looks like. We'll post them and say, hey, we just had a little uh, mountain angel. So Good, man. Thanks for hanging and drinking with me, pal. Cheers, buddy. Great to see you. Bye, guys. Have a good night.